something that's really been on my mind lately has been people who disregard a message because it comes from a messenger that they don't respect. It's so annoying. It's, it's frustrating even. You may not like someone. You may disagree with them uh, ideologically in a very strong way. But if what they say makes sense or is true, then you're a fool for throwing away what they're saying. How do we overcome that? I don't like just pointing out something that, that I dislike. I don't like pointing out something that I think is, is detrimental for self-development, for the growth of the species. I, you can't just disregard a message because it's from someone you don't like. That's lunacy. So how do we fix that? I think we have to teach patience. I think we have to emphasize that patience is important, that it's valuable, valuable. Why don't we ever pronounce the A in that? We have to teach that it's okay to listen to someone you dislike because the words coming out of their mouth might be something you agree with. Maybe we have to open ourselves to the idea of peace. Maybe we have to be open to the idea that someone you dislike or disagree with might actually become a friend or a mentor or someone you enjoy listening to. Maybe we're not good at accepting that people can change in that way or that our views can change. Maybe it has to do with the fact that we like things classified. Like, oh, I understand Tom. Hello, dog. I understand Tom. Tom is this kind of person. I, I get who Tom is and what he believes in. And then Tom starts to change, and you're like, oh, don't change. I had you figured out. Maybe that's the issue. So we figure someone out, or what their message is, or what they believe, and then we write them off. I don't like that person because of X, Y, Z. And so then that person is like, but... Here's ABC, which you agree with, and you don't listen to it because it's from them. I don't know. I'm thinking about this and how to overcome it and how to help people overcome that, that stubbornness to listen to someone just because they don't like them. Hmm. I think this problem bothers me. Because I actually believe that we can attain some form of world peace. I know that sounds silly. I know I, I might sound really ridiculous right now. But I think that is why this issue hits so strongly with me. Why, why, why it bothers me. Why it's on my mind. I think if we were to listen to each other we'd be able to explain our positioning, uh, why we believe what we believe, why we're spreading messages that we each have. And we'd be able to find some kind of middle ground where we could agree, shake hands, and not fight. Argue, yes. Debate how to better the lives of those around us and, and ourselves. Yeah, for sure. But, but not fight. So when people are discounting the ideas of others just because they don't like them or they disagree with other points they've made, I don't know, it's like, it's like throwing pearls back into the ocean. I don't, it's, like, it, it's wasteful to me. I don't like it. And so I wonder how to fix that. How do we overcome that shortcoming in, in human programming? I don't know. I'll think about it some more. Okay, I've thought about it some more. It's not possible. The world peace thing, it's not possible. But, you know what is possible? Dance party. <laughs> I was just kidding. That was a joke.
You have a dance party in your backyard? Kind of chilly out here without that, huh? It's like obviously world peace is a ridiculous idea. It's not, it's not something that you establish in the next decade. It's not something that we're looking at right now seriously. No, no politician is like, hey, world peace. No, we, we argue about other things. That would be like the, the super zoomed out long-term timeline. Like what would listening to people you dislike lead to? So discount that idea. Not because it's not a goal to shoot for, but because it's too, it's too idealistic. Think about, where did I read that? Um, under every utopia is something ugly. What does that mean? What? Under every utopia is something ugly. But it's, it's utopia. It's a society in which everything is perfect. Why, why would there be something ugly under that? The best conclusion I have for, for why that would be is because there'd be no diversity of intellectual thought. Any kind of disagreement would be shut down because it wouldn't agree with the societal narrative of whatever's going on at that time to make it a utopia. You have to have 100% adherence to the set of beliefs that a society is run on if you're going to have a utopia. That's all there is. So, so any kind of discourse would be trampled down, ignored, uh, diverted, or dissidents would be put into camps and destroyed. So maybe that's what the phrase under every utopia is something ugly actually means. And maybe, but then the original point I'm bringing up, not listening to the ideas of people you don't like, wouldn't that be a good thing? Because it, it strays away from that intellectually non-diverse utopia? Does that mean that a utopia is then a paradox by definition? With that, that phrase, that there's something ugly under each one of them? See, I don't know. I don't know. If we're going to find good in not listening to people you dislike, we could say that it strengthens our own resolve or our own tribe of, of thought uh, by ignoring any kind of dissident to those ideas. Okay. So you create kind of a... Um, ideological cohesion amongst yourself, the people around you, by ignoring the outside speaker, by the outside influence. Okay, I could see some kind of benefit there. But then how does that group grow? How do you know that the ideas of this third party that you disagree with or dislike aren't going to help the tribe grow? Again, it's like waste. It's throwing away possible growth opportunity. I would think intellectually that you want exposure to every idea. And if it's an idea you dislike or, or disagree with, then it's important to find reasons to dispute it, to argue against it, to work to disprove and... and intellectually overcome them, the ideas themselves, not the person espousing them. If your ideas are better, you will change that other person's mind. And if you don't, and things lead to violence, then you get like a, a World War II situation. But that's not the point of this video. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to fix this issue. And what is there to fix? I mean, am I trying to fix other people? Am I trying to get people to listen to others that they disagree with? Am I noticing it in myself? And I, I want to branch out to different, uh, different speakers or books, uh, different information that I'm not currently listening to? I don't know. I just, I'm fascinated with this idea. 
this past week that we disregard people we dislike. I don't know. I'll see if I can add anything more to it by the end of the day. I think I understand. I think I understand why this issue bothers me. This idea, whatever you want to call it. It's because I'm afraid of unresolved conflict. Any kind of conflict that doesn't have a resolution is frustrating. Because I always believe that there's some kind of resolution that can be made between parties of people. Between, <laughs> no matter the size, between two people or between nations, it doesn't matter. I, I think there's a middle ground that can be found. I think there's agreements that can be made and solutions that can be built to make sure that even in compromise, everyone is satisfied and peace is attained. And so the idea of not listening to people you dislike directly counters that kind of belief. That it directly provides an impassable wall when trying to journey towards peaceful resolution. So I definitely think about that in my life. Where are the people I dislike and how am I ignoring them? How can I listen to them more closely because I probably dislike them due to their ideas, due to the beliefs they have and what they're putting out in the world. So there's something there that bothers me. Therefore, I'm the one with the problem. Now, that might sound a little ridiculous, but really think about the message that they're putting out there and why it bothers you. Because if it's not bothering you physically, if it's not espousing violence to others, then there's something in you that needs to grow to accept what they're talking about. Really think about what it is people are saying and why it bothers you. If it really is just a minor disagreement, they like kale and you don't, then disliking them might be a little silly. Yeah, I, I don't know how to finish this. I don't know if I really have an overall point to this so much as Hopefully, I can learn to listen to people I dislike more. Learn to tolerate that and actually give them the time of day to get their message out. Maybe this gives you something to think about too. Maybe it could lead to something good for, for people to just be a little more patient. I don't know. I know, obviously we're not talking about situations where there's, there's ongoing yelling or, or a, I'm thinking of a riot or in a public space where people are, are screaming at each other or something. That's not, that's not what I'm talking about. That would be a very extreme case that it's hard to find middle ground with someone who's yelling at you. So don't think that that's what I'm talking about. Thank you for watching. May your day be filled with many ideas that you like. <laughs> Good night. And if I may.